El Nino. Above average sea surface temperatures everywhere, summer-like conditions already in full swing in places across the globe. We already have our first area of interest in the Atlantic. It's got a 10% chance of forming because shear is too strong in this area, but even if it does break our expectations, it'll not be a threat to the United States. But with hurricane season rapidly approaching, people, especially here on the East Coast and the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, are starting to feel anxious. But is there anything that I, Evan Freiberger, forecaster extraordinaire, can tell you to calm those nerves? Well, yes and no. We're only in May and hurricane season starts on June 1st and goes all the way to November 30th. If there was a chance for a tornado outbreak, even just seven days from now, I could make a video about it trying to tell you exactly what will happen and most likely would be completely wrong. And you're wanting me to try to do that, but instead of seven days, five months out? Yikes. You see, as a weatherman, I use models in real time to predict the weather, but in order to do that 100% accurately, I would need precise measurements of every square foot of the atmosphere and ground that shows me moisture content, temperature, wind speeds, shear values, amount of bananas in Madagascar, and that's just to name a few. So unless we release hundreds of thousands of Chinese spy I mean, weather balloons, or our AI overlord ChatGPT6 is somehow so smart it takes my job, there's just no way that I can tell you any exact details. The best I can do is guess, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing in this video. And now that I have completely removed all hopes that this will be 100% accurate, when I'm wrong, you can do nothing about it. Anyways, here we go. Now, as most of you have heard by now, we're about to be in an El Nino. In fact, the NOAA has issued an El Nino watch. Sorry to break it to you, but that doesn't mean everybody's gonna get a fancy El Nino themed timepiece to wear, even though that would be pretty awesome. But essentially, the waters here in the Pacific Ocean are becoming warmer and warmer, and that usually means less than average hurricanes in the Atlantic. You no, know, the place where we look for hurricane development that could impact the United States, but you knew that already, right? Right? There are some exceptions to this, but yeah. I think the most important word of that last statement was usually because there's one thing that could still cause this hurricane season to be above average, and that is peanut butter. Yep, that's right, because peanut butter and literally everything else humans can buy, ship across the planet and consumes, we've got a lot of extra heat circulating around the earth right now. And usually the oceans absorb it and dissipate it, but this year they've done pretty bad job. And now the Atlantic Ocean is at record temps and hurricanes like that like a lot like it's a hurricane's favorite food like hurricane's chicken uh, only a few people will get that joke but but in the end there's not a whole lot that could be predicted this year in terms of hurricane season because this year's setup is very unique so expect the unexpected. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that it would be better focusing our attention on studying this year's hurricane frequency rather than wasting all of our energy trying to predict something that is literally impossible to do. In fact, it's bozos on here on YouTube and on television that have peddled the myth that this is possible for views, monies, and clicks, and it very rarely works out. And when it does, I got a secret for you. It's luck, not skill. So yeah, I wish I could tell you the secret formula to the Krabby Patty of hurricane predictions, but I'm afraid I would just be lying to you. I got a question for you. Do you even really need a forecast past seven days? Let's break this down. A hurricane is forecasted to form and hit your city. Let's just say you live in Miami and some weather models say it'll happen in seven days. You start freaking out and go to the supermarket and buy all the toilet paper and the next day, the models say it's going to go south of Florida. Then the next day, the models say it's going to hit Houston. The news media and YouTube weathermen and women all go crazy, making thumbnails and titles telling everyone in Houston to prepare because the worst is coming, as they kind of should, but that goes a little bit overboard and fails to stress that five days out, the chances of the hurricane actually hitting Houston directly is very slim. By the time the hurricane makes landfall, it's Port Lavaca, Texas. There you were, scared to death in Miami with all that toilet paper and gallons of gas and gas canisters, but the hurricane actually ended up hitting a thousand miles away from you. Causing panic by trying to forecast accurately seven days out is just about as necessary as trying to teach a dog physics and can be expensive for people who believe these lies and start buying supplies prematurely. It's good to raise awareness of the possibilities, but at the same time, you need to stress the importance to stay calm until there's more clarity closer to the event. Now, 
Playing devil's advocate, you could say cities need more time to evacuate. The harsh reality of the accuracy of these models is you would have to evacuate every city along that 1,000 mile stretch of probability, which is obviously not a viable plan. Meteorology just hasn't gotten to the point where predicting something seven days out is useful for any real action other than getting a reaction out of someone to make more money off of unnecessary fear. And that's just seven days out. Now imagine one to five months. All that being said, Here's some tips I can give you when there's a hurricane or tropical storm projected to impact your city. If your city's in the cone of uncertainty, try using a sliding scale like this. Seven days out, less than 1% of hitting your city. Five days out, less than 10%. Three days out, less than 20%. Two days, less than 30%. And even one day out, it's still less than 50% of a direct impact of the worst part of the hurricane on your city. Now, once you're in the cone of uncertainty and we're three days out from impact, then that's the time to prepare by gathering supplies and have a plan in place to evacuate if ordered to. Now, because this isn't a lot of time to evacuate, people around you will panic and supplies will get scarce fast. So include delays in flight times, traffic, and have alternate products in case the ones you need are out of stock. In a perfect world, all cities along the coast would have the capability to evacuate their cities in three days time, but they don't, so don't rely on them to get you out. And even with that, sometimes because of the inaccuracies of the models, this time frame can be shrunk into one to two days. Listen. I wish I had a crystal ball because if I did, I could use it to save millions of lives. But that's not the world we live in. So I'll leave you with this one last bit of advice. Relax. The summer is here. Enjoy it. If a tropical system is forecasted for your area, then start worrying about it. But one to five months out, just stop it. You should be shooting fireworks and enjoying the extra time with friends and family. And I'll leave you guys at that. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you appreciated this video and comment down below what you think about the effectiveness of forecasting hurricanes one to five months out. Have a great day.